What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Nika from the Barrel. Stick around. Okay, Nika from the Barrel. This is a whiskey that I have not bought in a really long time. This is a bottle I remember being very popular like 10 years ago maybe more and then a lot of the hype and a lot of the buzz and a lot of the discussion about this stuff seemed to kind of just fizzle out kind of went away and for the longest time nobody was talking about this bottle now last year at the 2022 uh, online scotch whiskey awards this one won in the best blend category and it seems like after that there seems to be a bit of a, a resurgence of interest in this bottle which is great now this stuff has been a staple of affordability for a very long time if you're looking to buy anything japanese and uh, listen, buying Japanese products, buying Japanese stuff, always a good idea. Whether it's the whiskey, maybe it's the food or the electronics or the cars. Like I buy a lot of stuff from Japan and it's always amazing. But whiskey, the problem with Japanese whiskey is that it's really expensive. I'm sure you guys already know that. So having something like this stick around for a relatively affordable and stable price for all these years while everything else skyrocketed has been a blessing. Now, granted, it's Japanese whiskey in the loosest sense of the word, but the bulk of the malt and grain whiskey that goes into this stuff is apparently from the Yoichi and Miyagikyo distilleries. But of course, there are other components that go into this stuff, and we don't know specifically what they are. A very good contender would be Ben Nevis from Scotland, which is Nika owned, so we certainly have some of that in here. I don't know if anything else has been thrown into the mix, but it's possible. Apparently the specifics of the recipe for this stuff can change from batch to batch. That means the average age of the whiskey inside can vary. Uh, the specific cast breakdown can vary. But of course they do have a general formula that they try to stick to. But no two batches are going to be completely identical. Apparently there's more than 100 components that go into this whiskey, both malt and grain. It seems like the grain component is largely corn. Uh, this is not a cast strength whiskey. It is diluted. It's a standardized ABV. Uh, by the way, guys, none of this is my homework. This is all stuff that I found out by watching Max video over at Kempi Planet. He's got a great video. It's a very detailed breakdown of this stuff. I would recommend you guys go check it out. I'll put a link down below. Anyway, as I said, this is a bottle I've not had in years. I picked it up recently because the OS was told me to. And I'm curious to circle back around to it. Um, I wonder if it's still hype worthy. I wonder if the quality is still there. Let's find out. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. For specs, this one comes in at 51.4%. It is a chill filtered whiskey. It is a colored whiskey. Now, chill filtration at this ABV is somewhat odd, but at least we do get that higher ABV. And as I said earlier, at least this stuff is affordable. So I'm not triggered, as they say. All right, so I think this bottle is super cool. It reminds me of a Muji design. Uh, Muji, if you don't know, it's like this minimalist Japanese retail chain, and they have a lot of products that are kind of packaged like this. So we've got like a bottle of soap here that honestly, like that look is not far off. Also delicious, by the way. Yeah, hints of lavender. So for look, I'm going to give this one four and a half out of five. I am going to deduct that last 0.5 just because pouring from this is not great. Uh, in terms of information, nothing about color, nothing about chill filtration, nothing about the production process. So we do have very limited information here, but that bottle's cool. On the nose, we get some really nice honey and caramel notes in here. It is grainy but it's not off-putting. There's nothing sharp or unpleasant happening here. Uh, we have lots of sultanas. We have lots of nuts in here. We have a gentle smoke. We get vanilla in here. There's kind of like an indistinct sherry fruitiness to this. Now this whiskey is not blended out to the point of being characterless, but it's not a clear nose. Like some of the flavors in here are a little bit murky. And that's not a knock. It still smells great. It's a good nose. On the palate and the finish, this starts out sharp and spicy and grainy, but then we move into some rounder, more mouth coating flavors. We get stuff like nuts, roasted nuts, tobacco, oak. There's a soft sherry in here. There's vanilla, orange zest. We get lingering coffee and nutmeg. 
and we get some white pepper. It's a medium to long finish. Okay, so I like this stuff. I think it's a good whiskey. It's got some great flavors. It's well blended. And of course, the big selling point with this one is we have that higher ABV. As we all know, more alcohol, more flavor. And I think that's a big part of what elevates this whiskey. But like I said in the tasting notes, the flavors are not clear in this whiskey. So what we're getting here is a set of flavors that are very much like mushed together, to put it technically. Uh, but that's, that's not to say that the amalgamation of those flavors is bad. It's not. It's good. But if you're the type of person that looks for a lot of subtlety or nuance in your whiskey where you like to pick apart all these individual flavors, this one might not be for you. Uh, it's a very forward, grainy, kind of blended together character. And I'd be lying if I said that that lack of clarity, I guess we could call it, isn't a bit of a drawback for me. But it's still really good. Still, you absolutely can hone in on certain things in this whiskey that you enjoy. Uh, for me, I really like the nuttiness in here. I think we have some beautiful vanillas and caramels. Uh, the gentle peat adds a nice like extra dimension. So yeah, it's not like this blended out mess. It's just not super clear and we'll leave it at that. And the thing is, a whiskey doesn't need to be super clear or detailed or nuanced for me to enjoy it. I enjoy this whiskey very much just on a visceral level. I enjoy drinking it. That being said, I do have a couple other Japanese on my shelf that I enjoy and I'll reach for them first if I want to sort of like up my game a little bit, but the drawback there is that they're both more expensive. For example, I've got this one here, which is the Miyagikyo. This is another Nika product. This of course is a single malt, so we are going to have more of a distinct character. Uh, it is a little bit young and it's also about double the price of this stuff. I do prefer it to this, but you know, when you factor in value, eh, tough. I've also got this one here. This one's Ichiro's Malt and Grain. Really, really good. It's about 15 US dollars more expensive than the Nika from the Barrel in my market, but it's also a full-size bottle. Thing is, I do much prefer it to the Nika, and I would recommend it over the Nika, but I've heard it's more expensive in the West and it can be hard to track down. But if you can find it, really, really good. But of course, we're here to talk about Nika. And listen, I know I'm not laying on the flattery too thick, but I do genuinely enjoy this whiskey and I am going to recommend it to you guys. What I like is that it's got a great all-rounder flavor profile, so we have touches of sherry in there. We've got some gentle peat. It's sweet, but it's not over the top. And just the fact that it's a Japanese product that comes in a really cool bottle, it always makes for like a fun talking point with your guests. So my score on this one is going to be 86. I think it's a fantastic whiskey. It's big, it's bold, it's fun. We have some great flavors in here. It's a fun one to have on the shelf. You can show it to your snob friends if they're unconvinced that blends can be good. This is absolutely a good whiskey, and it comes recommended because of the price, which brings us to value. So yeah, great value here. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the few Japanese whiskeys that remained available, affordable, accessible to us over the years when everything else is going crazy with terms, in terms of prices. Um, yes, it is a 500 ml bottle but it's a higher ABV and it's quality stuff. Where I live, it comes in at just over 40 US, just under 35 pounds. I think it's worth that and I think it's worth picking up. Recommend it. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna help support the channel, I do have a Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. And as usual, I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried Nika from the Barrel? What were your thoughts? Let me know down below. Finally, down below in the comments, you can also let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.